All right, so in algebra, functions is one of the most important topics that you study. And when you study functions, you need to understand this word right here, and that is domain. Okay, so here we have a function, and of course we are seeing the graph of this function, and we want to find the domain of this function graphically. All right, so here we have the xy axis, and this point has a open circle at the coordinate to one, and then here is our function. Okay, so what we want to do here is find the domain and range of this function. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to find the domain and range of a function with only a graph. This is something that you definitely need to know if you expect to do well in algebra. So let's go ahead and see the answer to this problem. So the domain and range are what? Well, there's a couple different ways you can express this, but effectively the domain is all x is greater than 2, where x is a part or element of the real number set, and the range is all y is greater than 1, where y is an element or a part of the real number set. Now there's another way to express this using interval notation. Now if you just said these right here, I would uh, definitely give you full credit, uh, but you want to be more specific and be like, okay, well, if X is greater than two, what um, is X? Okay, like in other words, what number system are you, uh, is X a part of? And we are talking about the real number system. So as you kind of get into more advanced mathematics, these little details are not like trivial, right? You need to kind of put this in, but I'll show you another way to express the domain and range here in just one second. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about functions, uh, their domain and range. Okay, so again, there's a lot to kind of get into about functions in terms of, uh, you know, what is the domain? What First of all, what is a function? Uh, you know, what's the domain? What's the range? Again, uh, this is a big, big topic, so we're only going to look at the domain and range of a function graphically. But let's just do a real, real quick review of some basic concepts. So here we have a function f of x. Let's uh, call it f of x is equal to x squared. Okay. So we have this x and we have this x squared. All right. Now remember, in uh, terms of functional language, f of x is equal to y, all right? So f of x is equal to y, just in case you didn't know that. So if you're looking at this as a quadratic function, it definitely is. This would be its respective quadratic equation. y is equal to x squared. So f of x, again, is equal to y. So I can just change out this f of x and put a y right there, right? So uh, again, this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic function. Now. If we take a look at the graph of this, hopefully you remember that the graph of x squared, y equals x squared, is a basic parabola. Let me just kind of erase. Matter of fact, I'll erase all of this here just so it gets a little bit more room. Just kind of set up this explanation for those that might be a little bit confused. We'll kind of do this little problem here before we take on this bigger problem. Okay, so right here is the x-axis. Here is the y-axis. So if I was to graph y equals x squared, it would be effectively a parabola that goes through the origin and kind of bounces right there at 0, 0, and there you go. And if we can kind of see that, in fact, this is indeed graphically a function because this graph is passing the vertical line test. Okay, so what is the domain of a function? Well, the domain is all the input values, okay, all the input values. So what can we put into the function? Well, uh, the input value into the function is this x right there, okay? So all the x's are the set of kind of um, the x variables, what we call the independent variable. It's our input variable. Now, uh, oftentimes a function, you just can't put anything into a particular function. There could be uh, very well Restriction. So the allowable set of input values you could plug into a function is what we call the domain of the function. Okay. Now, once you put in all the set of these allowable input valuable, uh, excuse me, input values into the function, 
we're going to get an associated output value, okay? And all those sets of uh, the respective set of output values based upon the input values, this is called the range of a function, okay? So again, the range is dependent upon the domain, okay? That's why we call the y variable the dependent variable, x is the independent variable. So basically what I want you to do is to associate the uh, uh, domain of a function with the x uh, uh, axis, okay? All the x values that are going are kind of covered with the graph, all right? And then the uh, y values, wherever the y values are going on, that's going to be where the domain is at. So if we look here carefully, what are the set of allowable inputs into this function right here? Can we put in negative values? Yep, no problem there. We could put negative values because we're going to be able to kind of plot those on our graph. We could put in positive values. Matter of fact, we could put in any x we want, all right, because this graph is spanning the entire x-axis. So here, the domain would be the entire real uh, number system, okay? It would be all these real numbers. There would be no restrictions on it. So you could basically say X uh, is just a part of the real number system. No restrictions at all. Any X value you can plug in here. And you can't, I can't think of any X value because there isn't, whether it be a positive, negative number, decimal, square root, it doesn't make a difference. We can square it, not a problem, okay? But what is the respective uh, range of this function. Well, that's a different deal. Now, if you look graphically, this graph is only going from the positive, it's, it's only coming from zero to the positive y axis, okay? It's going up this way, right? It's not covering any negative values. So the range is going to be all y's greater than or equal to zero, okay? Well, y is a part of the real number system, okay? Because that's where this graph is covering. It starts from zero on the y-axis and just goes up all the way to positive infinity. So you gotta be able to read a graph and uh, you know basically determine the domain and range. And this is a pretty simple example. Now, if you're already confused, I'm kind of um, quickly going over major concepts in mathematics about functions, uh, domain, range. I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on all of these topics, but I'm gonna really uh, suggest that you check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, or uh, for some of you that are more advanced, I wanna check out like my pre-calculus course, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So looking at this graph, we already know it's a function. So again, the domain, we're gonna look at the x axis, okay? This graph is covering what on the x-axis? Well, it's starting from here and covering, kind of basically think of it uh, like if the sun was casting down here, what would be the shadow? It's covering all these x's, right? Okay, so it's not starting. This open circle means it's not including two, all right? So we got this x-y point. So this is two right here, okay? But that is open meaning that it does not include the point two. So it's everything greater than two this way to the right, okay? So once you kind of just like focus in on the x-axis, like, okay, this graph is covering where on the x-axis, everything greater than two, we can go ahead and define that as the domain, okay? So the domain is all x is greater than two, where x is an element of the real number set. So this would be, uh, an appropriate way to define the domain. Another way you can do this, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this video, is by using something called interval notation. All right, so this is kind of a, um, probably a, this is more commonly used for more advanced mathematics. Now, I really don't want to explain uh, interval notation. It's not that difficult, but basically, if it's greater than, but not greater than or equal to, we're gonna use a parenthesis. If it's greater than or equal to, we would use a uh, square bracket, okay? So if we had this situation, we'd use a bracket like this. If it's uh, just greater than, we use a open parenthesis. So this is our left hand, uh, our left uh, part of our interval, and then our right uh, part, this is going to positive infinity. So you could write this notation this way to positive infinity. So if you don't understand interval notation, I teach this in my pre-calculus course as this, again, uh, when you're in uh, more advanced mathematics, you will use interval notation, but uh, all of you out there should be able to understand this. Okay, so that is the domain. Again, 
you want to focus in on that independent variable x and just concentrate on the x axis and this can get a little bit tricky especially with uh, you know more difficult graphs but let's go ahead and take a look at the range so the range you're going to focus in on the y axis so this graph is covering what on the y axis well it's starting from uh, all values uh, greater than one okay so remember here is y two is x so we're concentrating on one so everything above one is what this graph is covering okay on the y axis so we can go ahead and define that as the range uh, being uh, all y is greater than or equal to 1, we're y's element of the real number system. Or again, we can use the interval notation. The range is 1, and it's going towards positive infinity. Okay, so if it was going down like this, this is negative infinity, this is positive infinity, this is negative infinity over here, and this is positive infinity over here. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.